Good morning. Good morning and welcome to First Unitarian Universalist Church of Nashville. My name is Jay Tiefenbrunn and I am very pleased to be your director of music ministries. Our collaborative pianist this morning is Holling Smith Bourne and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our online worship this morning. If you're watching live, you'll see buttons that will bring you to our website for joys and concerns, offering and our order of service and other worship information. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, visit firstuunash.org and click on the With You Worship portal. I'd like to invite you to join us in our opening song, number 1064, Blue Boat Home. invite you to connect into your heart space and connect with all of our friends and neighbors who are worshiping with us online this morning and throughout time. We invite you to say hello in the chat and let us know that you're here. Our chalice lighting was written by Maureen Killeran. As the kindling of this chalice calls us to community, let there be light. As the flame of this chalice reminds us of our values, let there be light. As the glow of this chalice encourages us to hope, let there be light. Good morning. You may have noticed a rosebud. That is to mark the 
birth of a new baby among us. Isla Verapine Barnett was born on June 19th. Her parents, Padmini and John, are thrilled to have her with them. They look forward to introducing her when the time comes that we can meet together. So now I'd like to invite you into the spirit of worship with these words adapted from Becky Edmonston Lang. Come, let us create a place across time and space that we make holy by all of our presences. Come with your strengths and vulnerabilities, fears, and anxieties, loves, and hopes. For in this virtual place, you need not hide, nor pretend, nor be anything other than who you are and who you are called to be. Come into this expansive place where we can connect and be connected, heal and be healed, forgive and be forgiven. Come into this place where the ordinary is sanctified, the human is celebrated, and the compassionate is expected. Come into this place. Together we make it a holy place.
Kitty monkey, we were just on the screen. Did you see yourselves? That was, well, it was, made me cry, but it was fun. So I have to ask you guys, are you packing your toys? The truck is coming on Tuesday, or is it Wednesday? It's coming soon. And we're gonna have to say bye-bye to everybody. I don't wanna pack, cause I, what am I packing for? What, where are we going? Why are we going? Well, we've talked about that. Yeah, but we wanna know the future. We wanna know. Yeah, there was, um, did you, you've been watching, have you all been watching, there's a, there's this thing on the website, it's called a virtual scrapbook and people are playing things on it. And one of my friends' moms did a video on it and she told the future. She did that for you, Gail. Oh, I, I know. And, and she, but she didn't really tell the future because she took a tarot card and she used that tarot card to help me pay attention to things in the future. What do you mean? I don't, that's, I don't get it. Okay, so no one can tell the future. The future is always mysterious. But I want you to imagine that you're in a car and we're driving at night when it gets dark and we're way out in the country. So there's not a lot of street lights. Okay, you can imagine. Okay, now what do we do so we can see ahead of us? <gasps> I know, I know, we turn on the headlights. Yes, okay. Now, can you see very far away? No, just a little, little bit. We can't see all the way. So that's what it is like when you're in the f going towards the future you can see a little bit ahead of you, but not all the way. And you wanna pay attention to that part you can see. Okay, so, so you're saying that when our friend's mom pulled a card for you and it said happiness, that it's not saying you're gonna be happy in the future, it's saying you need to pay attention to when you are happy. Yes, that's exactly it. So, can you tell our feature? Yeah, now? Okay, I'll pull, let's uh, have each of you pull a tarot card and let's see what we need to pay, you need to pay attention to while we're moving. Okay, okay, here's the tarot cards. Oop. Oh, look what I got. I also spilled your tea. Sorry, sorry, Kev. Okay, see what I got? That, what is that? Well, it says two of cups. And it says at the bottom, I don't know if you can see, it says love, see? So it's, and it's, it's not just any kind of love. It's love between two people. So you should pay attention while we're moving into the future to someone you love very much, who's very special, and is equal to you, and they love you back. Pay attention to that. Oh, I know who that is, that's you, monkey. I love you. Yeah, so pay attention to that. <sighs> that's all it says. Okay, oh, well, I want to look too. I want a card. Let's see if um, monkey can get a card without spilling my tea. <gasps> oh, you know, it's funny, but I got a loved one too. I think that's a loved one. It's the King of Cups. Look at that. That is a loved one, monkey. You're right. It's a very special loved one. It's saying that you can do something that's kind of hard for some people, let alone some little monkeys. It's reaching out and giving unconditional love unconditional love see it, it it's very very beautiful reaching out and giving wow 
So it's saying that even when you're irritated at me or monkey or gr we have grandpa kitty who's really old and sometimes, you know, he needs a lot of help. Sometimes he's irritating. He is not going to like this trip. You need to reach out, pay attention to what helps you reach out and love them, even when we're irritating. Oh, okay. That, that sounds hard, but I'm going to pay attention to that. Great. Well, now we're ready to look a little bit into the future. Not too far, just far enough. And it's time for us to do one last important thing. It's time for us to say goodbye, kitty and monkey, to all of your friends out there on the magic screen. Oh, ooh, okay, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. We love you. Good morning. My name is Denise Gouch, and I am your assistant minister. It is my pleasure to welcome you to worship. Ordinarily, joys and concerns are not live streamed, but while we are online, we will share joys and concerns if those who have sent them give permission on the submission form. Joys and concerns submitted after the middle of the live streamed service will be shared with permission during next Sunday service. All joys and concerns are shared as always with our lay ministry team. As Unitarian Universalists, our spiritual paths vary, but in this congregation, we have a covenant together. We affirm our interdependence, celebrate our differences, and work for justice. We are a welcoming congregation, and we deepen our relationships as we serve our congregation's mission to create community, nurture spiritual growth, and act on our values in the broader world, guided by reason and compassion. I'd like to extend a special welcome to visitors worshiping with us this morning. If you are seeking a spiritual home, we hope that you may find it here. All are welcome at our services and people become members of this congregation by signing the membership book and supporting the church with their time and finances. If you are considering joining the church or would just like to explore more about us, please be in touch with me. I am your assistant minister for congregational engagement and you can find my email address in the staff directory under contact us on the website. There are many announcements also posted on our website, which I hope you will read. And I've been asked to highlight this very special event. Please join the lead ministers advisory committee for Rev Gale's goodbye car parade today. Gail and Jim will be on the porch on the side of the Norris house from 1 to 3 p.m. waving goodbye as we drive past. Please follow the parade route posted on the church website at www.firstuunash.org. We will all drive south on Stokesmont and turn right to parade through the lower parking lot, waving goodbye before turning right out of the parking lot toward Woodmont Boulevard. Most of all, have fun with this parade. Think decorating cars, costumes, celebration, and super soakers. I hope we'll see you there. And now, a message from Elizabeth Gashir. Greetings, fun community. As most of you know, my name is Elizabeth Gashir, and I served this past academic year as your student intern during my second year of the Master of Divinity program at Vanderbilt Divinity School. So I wanted to create this virtual greeting for a few reasons. First, I just wanted to let you know that I've transitioned out of that role, but I'm still a member, so I will continue to be around at least through the end of my program for the next year. And so I look forward to seeing you, whether online and or hopefully eventually in person and continuing to do ministry together. Secondly, I wanted to give a special thank you to those of you who I have worked most closely with this past year. First and foremost, I am so grateful that I had the opportunity to be mentored by Reverend Gail Seavey in her last year with all of us. So thank you, Reverend Gail, for your mentorship, your leadership, and your wisdom and example this past year. Secondly, to the members of the NOAA Action Team, the Beloved Community Committee, and the lay ministry team. Thank you so much for the opportunity to work and serve 
and grow and learn alongside of you. It was an honor. And third and finally, I just wanted to let you all know that FUN is my home church um, for the ordination process. So as I continue to discern whether ordination is for me and um, take those steps, I am very grateful to have your all's support and thoughts and prayers and questions along that journey. So thanks, and I am sending you all lots of love and light and healing energy um, during this time. Blessings. Thank you, Elizabeth. You may know that we share every Sunday's collection with an organization whose work outside our walls aligns with our values. For the month of June, our Share the Plate partner is Nashville Launchpad, an organization working with youth and young adults experiencing homelessness. You can read more about their work inside our online worship portal. For now, we have no friendly ushers to pass you the offering bowls, but our finance and communication folks have made it easy for anyone, anytime, to access the do online donation form at firstuunash.org. If you would like to mail a check to the church, please write in the memo line how you would like your donation to be used. If you want your gift to be, to be credited to your pledge, please write pledge. If you write Sunday Offering, it will be donated to our Share the Plate partner. In this season of virtual offering bowls, we are especially grateful for the steady generosity which allows us, both within and beyond the congregation, to continue creating community, nurturing growth, and acting on our values. We are also deeply grateful for the connections among us, for your presence together. And I invite you now to join in our weekly ritual of gathered community. Following the upcoming musical interlude, we will share the joys and concerns submitted through the online form, provided permission is given on that form. All joys and concerns, as I said, will be shared with our lay ministry team. And now I invite you to settle into whatever space you are inhabiting right now and know that you make that space holy by being there, just yourself. And we make that space holy by the connections that reach out through the, the, just the marvel of online connectivity. Across space and time, we are connected in so many ways. And this connection too is holy. So I invite you to take a few deep breaths, Consider today, consider the minutes, the hours, and the days that have led up to this moment of connection. And if you have joys or sorrows that have touched you deeply that you would like shared with this community, the musical interlude is a wonderful moment to use that joys and concerns form. And if you just want to revel in this sense of being connected together in holy space, by all means, do that as we listen now.
Thank you so much, Han. We have many things to share this morning. Anne Morse has sent a short and sweet. Let me start there. This is a concern. Change and goodbyes are so hard. And I know Anne speaks for all of us. Carolyn Turner sends something that's both a joy and a concern. Sending wishes to Gail and Jim, best wishes for a safe journey to their new home east. Sadness to see the end of our relationship with us here in this space. Rachel Rogers has a joy. She writes, my heart is full after this week's General Assembly. So much to report back to the fun community. Thank you for allowing me to be your delegate. I've learned so much and we have so much joyous work to do. The Nine family sends this. We focus on the joy of having Gail's unique guidance and light that has made this pandemic and time away from each other more bearable. Thank you, Gail and Jim. We love you and we'll miss you so much. Thank you. From Marguerite Mills, we have a concern. Please hold Althea Bernstein in your hearts. She is the 18 year old Unitarian Universalist woman who was attacked in Wisconsin two days ago. Althea is only one of far too many people of color who have been harmed, but she reminds us that we as a community are not immune. See the church website for information about how to send a card to Althea and her family. And finally, we have a joy from Brian Carlson that I think also speaks for many of us. In recent months and weeks, we have shared together the love and memories with our beloved Reverend Gail Seavey. Some of these may still remain unspoken. Regardless, we hold these in our hearts, surrounded by the love that we have fostered together and grown for the past 15 years. What remains in our hearts is an immeasurable gift. It is a legacy that can be passed forward to any and all who wish to receive it. We are indeed grateful. Blessed be and thank you. holding these joys and concerns, as well as the many, as Brian says, that remain yet unspoken in our hearts. Let us join together now in a spirit of prayer. Spirit of life and love. This is for many people on this planet, a season of grief and gratitude. And it is especially for us here in this congregation, a time of mingled joy and thanksgiving and grief and oh, so much gratitude. We grieve for the many losses we have all experienced in the last several months with the pandemic, with changes in workplaces and daily routines, with the the never ending weight of not knowing exactly what's coming in the future. With having to hold General Assembly without being able to gather many, many UU bodies together, to miss the singing in the Great Hall. And 
to say goodbye to a beloved minister who has led us with faith and love and hope and oh so many stories for many long years. And with all this grief, our hearts are also full to overflowing with gratitude. Gratitude for a world in which we now have ways to stay connected even though we can't be together in body. For a general assembly that did the business of our association and moved in new ways and created hopes for new change to come in the future. For the support that is always among us and between us. For the legacy of Gail C's ministry, which will remain ours here always to live into ever more fully. For the love that we share for the hope for change in the world and for the ability to join that change, to be part of it, to bring it about so that all of us can live in a world of connection and love and peace and justice. We grieve because we have lost much and we will lose more. And we are so grateful because we have each other and we are blessed beyond measure. May we be people who know this. May we be people who live so this will always be true. Blessed be, amen, may it be so. Our reading today might sound a little familiar. I've been reading bits and pieces of it all month. And today I'm going to finally read the whole reading, Litany for Becoming by Infleshed. Now I'll read most of it. I will save the last stanza for our benediction. To become is a lifelong process. Nothing is constant, not even the self. We evolve in the midst of narratives meant only for some and ways of being made narrow by fear and power. We must then have the courage to listen to the truth of our own lives, to the wisdom that comes from within. Responding without resistance or the need to control, but with welcome and curiosity. This is what ensures our becoming is an unfolding of our truest self. This lifelong labor cannot be carried out alone, it requires help from friends and lovers, family and creaturely companions who bear witness to what makes us come alive and say to us, listen, look, feel, Pay attention to that. This is loving and being loved. Telling the stories, sharing in the memories, giving thanks for the relationships, understandings and experiences past that have shaped us to this day. This is loving and being loved. Celebrating new beginnings that excite, holding risks together, leaning into unknowns with the promises of support and companionship. This is loving and being loved. Listening to the future calling uniquely to each of us in the midst of all life's norms, helping one another find our place in the shared labor of collective life, supporting each other in what it is the world's ache is asking from us. This is loving and being loved. To say for the first time, this is who I am. This is the truth of my body. This is what I know about myself. 
This is my name, and this is where my path is leading me. And to have it heard, have it received, have it affirmed. And then to say it again and again as we change and as the world changes. And to have each proclamation greeted with open armed embrace. This is loving and being loved. So ends my reading, but I'd like to carry one sentence from it forward and repeat it as an invitation for your reflection and a moment of silence. I will end this silence with another line from this beautiful reading. Listening to the future, listening to the future, calling uniquely to each of us in the midst of all life's noise. Supporting each other and what it is the world's ache is asking from us. This is loving and being loved. May it be so. Would you please join in singing Spirit of Life, hymn number 123 by Carolyn McDay. So I have never had to retire before. And to help guide me, I've used an ancient story that I have referred to all this month. And that was the story of Moses in the book, the Hebrew book of Deuteronomy saying goodbye after his decades of leadership. And like Moses, we spent some time remembering the covenant that we have learned to deeply live into together. And like those people who are escaping from slavery in legend, we have become a people by living covenant together. We belong to one another. And as I announced, I was retiring after 15 years of service here and 30 years of service as a parish ministry to my beloved, our beloved Unitarian Universalist covenant, the greater covenant throughout this world. I had to, with you, um, choose a new lead minister to come in. Actually, I got to stay out of that. That was your choice and you have chosen someone. So 
That's what Moses did. He, he, he was more hierarchical. He chose the leader, but you get to choose your next leader. And of course, that person will be joining 11 other staff members that between them have 55 years worth of experience with you living that covenant. So I think you will all be able to invite her together into your covenant as you move forward. So then the next thing that Moses did is he pointed out across this great plain, a valley. And the bottom of the valley was the Jordan River and they could see the other side. And he said, I will not be going into that promised land with you. Your new leader will take you there. But it's all right if you respond to that environment in new ways and that your covenant changes. It will change with time. You will build a new covenant. And then he said goodbye. So today is the day for me to point to that future towards the promised land as our futures diverge. And then we'll say goodbye. <sighs> Moses knew he could not predict the future. In the Hebrew tradition of a prophet, they did not tell the future. What they did was pay attention to the signs of the times. Some people would say it was like they held the newspaper in one hand. They really paid attention. On the other hand, they held the covenant, the greater vision that made them a people, their highest values. And so that is my basic invitation to you today, is to pay attention to the signs of the times while holding our greater vision and figuring out as we go our separate ways, how to live it. As I move to the Northeast to a place that is home, where I will be with brothers and sisters, nephews and even, and nieces, but also even a few great nephews and nieces, I know that's a different environment. Not only will I be joining a new church and making covenant with those people, I've known some of those people for 50 years. <laughs> so um, it will be renewing old friendships. I also will be making covenant with that minister to support her ministry in the larger vision that we share for Unitarian Universalism. Like Moses, I think I'm walking forward, carrying more of a lantern than a headlight, looking a little ahead, not very far ahead, and going, how, how am I going to live my covenant and my vision of our values as I move into this new place and this new future? At the same time, you, will be probably using headlights in a car, looking ahead, reading the signs of the times here in Middle Tennessee and seeing how that calls you to answer to the world's hurt. We have so much that we're holding in common, even as we're diverging, just the beginnings, as you learn about the beginnings of General Assembly, there was so much work that people have been doing to become, all of us, a more anti-racist institution, even as our hearts and minds have been changing and understanding that more deeply at a very profound level. 
I'm sure part of holding that vision and the signs of the times will be continuing understanding how we this congregation and i'll be doing the same thing closer how do we make these congregations truly anti-racist institutions that help dismantle white supremacy culture also i want to hold from the common work that we're doing together this vision that we share even as we go to separate futures that the uu ministers association voted to radically radically rewrite their code of conduct and accountability guidelines pretty much from the bottom up so it more profoundly expresses our commitment to covenant and that covenant again has deepened in its anti-oppressive understanding it's a radical shift it's not legalistic it's deeply and profoundly relational and it has been started that conversation that led to that started with our work in this congregation and with a few other prophets speaking the signs of the times and holding them up to our values. You have done good work. We have done good work together. And now others, including some of you, are continuing that work forward as our futures diverge. I'm going to be doing that work in a different way. I'm going to be living on an island. A lot of people write books there. It's very quiet. So I plan to write a book about this journey this journey to a um, less abusive um, environment in our culture, to be less misconduct, less sexual abuse, and it's gonna be very personal. So that will be my call, part of my call, I, I think. You don't know, I don't know what's beyond. I don't know what deer are gonna jump in front of those headlights, but that's the plan. So we don't know the future. We don't know what it's going to be, but we know a lot about how to move forward into it. Um, since Kitty and Monkey loved Jessica's tarot reading on the virtual scrapbook for us, I uh, remember that I did a tarot reading for this congregation at the time of my installation here, which was more like 14 and a half years ago. And um, so I wanted us to reflect just a way to organize my thoughts about what we know about change on the seven of what they call trumps, the major archetypal cards. All the sevens in the um, tarot deck refer to change, which clearly through the symbols is just something that's part of being human or you know as people say the only constant is change but the the the, the archetypal card of that is the seven is called the chariot so it's not you know a prophet carrying um their lantern as they walk and it's not a car with headlights it's a chariot which is like an old-fashioned car right and Several of the things in the picture are symbols that suggest some guidance on this journey that you're taking and the journey of change that I'm taking. For instance, the guy is, the, guy, the person is holding what they call the wheel of fortune. And there's a lot of energy to that. When I see that, it could be, the, it feels like it's fueling the chariot forward, right? That's, I mean, that's what it feels like to me, even though it could be a steering wheel, help you guide. So the Wheel of Fortune is another archetypal card, and it suggests that we can steer as we move through the future. We might not have total control over the future, Oh, we probably don't, but it's not faded either. So 
it suggests in the symbols that three things help us steer as we move towards the future. One of those things is what some would call objectivity. It's what spiritually I call the ability to see things as they are and not as we want to fear them to be. In terms of prophecy, it is that ability to be able to see the signs of the times. It's actually the scientific way to look at things, trying to understand where our, objecti our subjectivity, our inner experience blinds us to seeing what's really happening around us in the world. The more we're able to pay attention to the signs of the times, the more able we are to steer appropriately. Makes sense, right? Okay. Now, in the card, it's like it's the chariot is being pulled by these stone, these animals, but they look like stone sculptures. They don't look like they can move at all. It's really strange. <laughs> And I think the, the, these, these images are supposed to be images from different um, Egyptian um, symbols of the whole universe. They are the four corners of this endless universe. And I think it suggests that even though we're in change and there's this energy with the steering wheel and it's always moving, we don't really have a choice, there is this larger sense of time that really, to us, feels slow. Some people feel like it feels like endless time. And we all, as we go through change, which is so much motion, we're driving forward, walking forward, we need to rest and stop and live in that endless time for a moment. Some of us do that meditation or those creative flowing moments or those physical flowing moments where we lose sense of time. It is in those moments out of time that we are refreshed and renewed and able and, and, and actually integrate some of this stuff that we're seeing. Our unconscious starts putting it together and creating not just understanding, but maybe even wisdom. So I would suggest that the card is reminding us what many of us already know, we need this pattern as we change of motion and rest. And last of all, it um, has, um, very interesting thing in the in the armor, which is kind of like the persona or the ego of a person. There are these jewels, and in the symbols of the tarot, those jewels uh, traditionally mean that your wealth are these things that you carry with you, your experiences. There is not one among us who has not experienced changes, radical changes, had to look at a new environment, a new leader, a new way to lead yourself. And we can call on those experiences and they will help guide us. It helps us to share our experiences with each other. So as I diverge with you, you will share your experiences with each other as you move in your direction. And I will share my experiences with my new covenanted community as another member in the pew. So my beloveds, my beloveds, I have such trust in you. You have held covenant and we have all changed and grown become more loving, more capable of justice in our actions. And we will continue to do so. I have every faith that you will do that, 
even as I know I have to find new ways to do it as well. I know that you will continue looking just a few feet ahead in that shining that light. You will continue to look and read the signs of the times holding our Unitarian Universalist values, our purposes and principles, our covenants with one another. Because even as you transform one another, as you've transformed me, it is still our call to transform the world. Soon it is time for me to do a final goodbye. You have been so wonderful to me in the last month. We've had so many warm memories, so many gifts, so many cards. I cannot thank you enough. I will treasure them all. Pretty sure for the rest of my life, <laughs> however long that is, I will always remember you with love. And all I ask of you is to remember me as loving you. I will be saying goodbye at the parade, the car parade at one o'clock this afternoon. We might have thunder and lightning with it, who knows? So goodbye, dear friends, goodbye. Our closing hymn today is a very special gift for Reverend Gale. 29 First UU singers of all ages participated in creating a distance sing as a special farewell. I could not have done this without every single one of them, as well as Holling, Chris, Jack, Tom, and Amberly, our band, our audio mixologist, Alex Wilder, and most especially our video producer, Sean Appelt. The song is by Harry Belafonte, and he was inspired by a storyteller he met on his travels to the Republic of Guinea in West Africa. That storyteller went way back in African tradition and African mythology and told this story about the fire, the sun, the water, and the earth. He pointed out the whole of these things put together turns the world around. Please join the first UU band and singers in our closing song, Turn the World Around. We come from the fire, living in the fire, go back to the fire, turn the world around. We 
Well, thank you, choir and Jay and everyone. Oh, um, I, a technical note: we become we've become aware that some of you uh, may have had uh, may have been unable to hear Elizabeth's video. So we want to let you know that will be posted on the website. If you missed it, I encourage you to go watch it. She's um, signing out as our student uh, minister for this year, but uh, has a lot of good things to say to you. The words for our chalice extinguishing were written by Elizabeth Sella Jones, and you can find them at the bottom of the order of service. Please join with me. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And I'd like to close with a final stanza of Litany for Becoming. There is no me without you. We shape one another. The sacred that birthed us weaves our lives together so that we can only find ourselves through shared becoming. For my journey and all its winding ways for yours. For all the saints who labored for what is, all the kin whose lives made ours possible. For all those yet to come for whom living our truths today will mean breaking possibilities open for them tomorrow. We pause. We give thanks. We acknowledge. This is loving and being loved.